By the beginning of 1945, the German army had suffered catastrophic losses and the war fronts were collapsing. Unfortunately, we did not know that. What we saw was what was masses of prisoners now reduced to a few thousand emaciated figures who were, for the most part, incapable of work. We, wretched figures, were gathered together as one would sweep up rubbish, assembled for transport. We knew full well that most of us could not survive the stress of the journey, that most of us would perish. I was without friends anymore, but no longer affected by this. I had no feelings of mourning or remembrance, a stranger among strangers. I was also estranged from my own being. I had no memories, could no longer remember names or thoughts. It was as if I had no past. Almost a third of our comrades were either dead or dying when we reached Flossenbach station. From here, we would have to march once again until we reach our destination. Tired and dying, we were driven forward through Flossenbuch. I was lost in sad thought and wondering what horrors would this camp have in store for each of us. The loud ringing of church bells woke something within me. I realized suddenly that this was a Sunday and before us lay a church in Flossenburg. Did this signify anything? Had the priest rung the bells to call together the good citizens of this small town to protest against inhumanity and indignity in general and this awful procession of corpses in particular? I really wanted to believe, to hope, that the priest was trying to alert the world from its indifference. I hoped these faithful Catholics would raise their hands in protest. I hoped to feel their empathy in the face of this unfathomable mass murder. They won't remain silent any longer, right? Just then, the gates of the church opened and the faithful slipped off the pavement into the road. These God-fearing people in their best Sunday dress simply clutched their prayer books and passed us by without protest, without empathy, feeling, or any understanding. Was it fear in their eyes? Indignation? I could only believe it was contempt. It was all I had been accustomed to for so long. The bells seemed to ring directly from the hearts of the pious, those children of God who only seemed to know about love your neighbor and compassion from the pages of the Bible. They calmly surveyed our misery and with hardened hearts observed us like statisticians contemplating criminals. Then I remembered. I remembered the awe I felt when as a child I visited Catholic houses of God, their unique rituals, the mystical semi-darkness. How I believe those who prayed in those houses of God must have a special inner ability to take on the pain and suffering of other human beings. Following the example of their God? Wasn't one of the basic principles of this church an unconditional obligation to love your neighbor? Achtung! The numbing reality of this encounter destroyed whatever remained of my childish fantasy. The barbed wire fence of Flossenburg concentration camp loomed before our eyes. What horrors awaited me, I did not know.